Gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you the latest development of the Lucky Conroy case. Lieutenant Hardy, the police department spokesman, states that although the murderer is still at large, he is confident that an early arrest is certain. see me? Yes. My name is Ramon Delgado. Uh, toss me that towel, will you, Mr. Delgado? Since you came here, I take it you know who I am. But of course. You're the Falcon, the detective. Michael Wadley. Only my friends and some of my enemies call me the Falcon. Now that we uh, know each other, Mr. Wadley, permit me to... Have you met my partner? Why, no, I haven't. Brain Trust, shake hands with Mr. Delgado. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, Mr. Delgado, what can I do for you? I have selected you to perform for me a, a most important service. Such as? Last night I committed an impulsive act. Most impulsive. I killed a man. You don't say. Must have been quite a sensation. I killed him and I'd do it again if I had to. Do you hear that, Brain Trust? He killed a man just like that. And no regrets. Two times. Two times I warned him to stay away from Margo, my wife. He wouldn't, so I shot him. It's simple, no? You make it sound reasonable. Who was the lucky lover? A pig named Conroy. Lucky Conroy, eh? I'm on my way to the police now. Giving yourself up? Yeah, but it's not serious. When I tell a man in charge of the justice why I killed Conroy, he'll let me go. Yeah, judges are funny like that. Why'd you come to me? To hold for me this key. And, uh... Here's $500 for your services. What's the catch? There's no catch. Just hold the key until I'm set free. Then I come to you and you give it back. Did it ever occur to you that uh, you might not be set free? If uh, by some silly mistake such is the case, then uh, you take the key and give it to my lawyer. Just as a matter of personal curiosity, why don't you give it to your lawyer yourself? Because I don't know who this lawyer will be. And don't ask questions. 
Then we have made, uh, shall we say it, a deal? Yes, I shall say it. We have made a deal. Good. Now I will go and surrender. On your own steam? Never go to the police. What do we pay taxes for? Let them come to you. Here, have a donut. Huh, thank you. Unless I miss my guess, Mr. Delgado, I'll get you a free ride downtown. I tell you, Lieutenant, I don't know anything about it. But you were Conroy's partner. You did own a stable of horses with him. And there was bad blood between you. Well, everybody has misunderstandings. Yes, I suppose so. Hello. Oh, hello, Mike. Hardy! Quick! This is a matter of life and death. If anything happens, I want you to take care of... No! No! You won't get by with it. Mike! Hello! Hello, Mike! Send my car out front right away. Thanks for coming down, Johnny. Don't leave town. I might want you. Here's a cup of coffee, Mr. Delgado. Oh, thanks very much. Say, that's a very good picture of you, Mr. Watling. Oh, that's not me. That's a picture of John Calvert. John Calvert? You mean uh, the great magician? Oh, he's not so hot. This is a picture of me here. Hey, he looks exactly like you, Mr. Watling. I don't think so. Hey, you must be a magician, too, with all the funny-looking things around here. Oh, I do a few tricks. We have plenty of time before Hardy gets here. If you like, I'll show you a few. Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah. Remember, the closer you watch, always the less you see. Now watch very closely. Yep, there we are. And presto changeo, and we have a bowl of goldfish. What do you know? Huh? Oh, that's good. Say, what's the tub for? Well, you come right over here and I'll show you. Now you just hold this right here. You'll be my assistant. And here we have an empty tub. Think. There you are. Hello, We have Oscar. Take it easy, boy. Take it easy. What happens to the duck? Oh, he knows his way around. That's a good trick, Mr. Watling. And you're a good assistant, Mr. Delgado. <laughs> Come right over here and I'll show you another one. Here, hold this bowl, will you? Lieutenant Hardy. That's all, Bob. Go back to the car. Say, Mike, is this another one of your gags, or what is it? Say hello to Brain Trust and shake hands with Mr. Delgado. Raymond, uh, Lieutenant Hardy, homicide. Homicide? That means murder in English. Well, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Lieutenant Hardy. How are you? Say, so what's the idea of making me rush over here? Mr. Watling said you would give me a ride to the Hall of Justice. Sorry, Mr. Delgado, but we lost our taxi license only yesterday. But my friend... I is... don't care if he's the mayor's friend. We don't make exceptions. Not even for the man that murdered Lucky Conroy? Hey, what kind of a gag is this? It's no gag. It's the truth. Well, you two guys want publicity? Remember, Lieutenant, this gentleman's kind enough to give himself up. Now, would you give him a ride downtown? What you kill him for, Delgado? Uh, none of that here. You have an office for details. All right, Delgado. That's the way it is. Let's go. Put him away, Lieutenant. The gentleman's giving himself up, remember? Thank you. A lot. The coffee, Lieutenant. 
One thing, Mike. If this guy isn't on the level, it's I'll... It's his story, not mine. Well, it better be a good one. Come on. Well, so long, Lieutenant. left the package in the locker at the bowling alley. Yeah, then he went to the Hollywood State Bank. Then to the Falcons' apartment, and that's where they picked him up. Uh-huh. What? Get a what? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Well, Grand Trust, we didn't have a bad start today. $500. You know what that man said? He said he killed a man. Bruce Conroy. Over a woman. Don't you think I ought to go take a look at a woman that's worth murdering for? Oh. oh. Just one little peek? my friend. My compliments, Mrs. Delgado. Who are you and what do you want? Suppose I tell you that I'm an insurance adjuster. I don't want any insurance. I'm not trying to send you anything. I just came to tell you that you might be the beneficiary in a policy written on the life of uh, Bruce Conroy. Oh. Won't you come in? Thank you. He couldn't have picked a more attractive beneficiary. Cigarette? Thank you. You were related to Mr. Conroy, weren't you? Well, uh, not quite related. You see, Mrs. Delgado, under the circumstances, there may be a question about the companies paying the policy. Just what do you mean? They may be of the opinion that your husband murdered Conroy, so you'd get the money. You're not from the insurance company. What brought you here? Curiosity. Just curiosity. I wondered if you would be mourning your gallant husband or your dead boyfriend. Just to satisfy your curiosity, I'll tell you. It's none of your business. You're very beautiful when you're angry, but I was already aware of your charm. I can see why a man might commit murder for you. Well, since you're asking for it so nicely, and, uh... Maybe you want to write a book about me. Lucky was just a friend. As for my husband, he's out of his mind. Now go ahead and weave yourself a nice story. Yes, that'll make a good story. When did you see Conroy last? Oh, that's asking a little too much. First you tell me you're an insurance man. Then I think you're from the papers or writing a book. Never mind who I am. All I have to say is that a jury might not believe your husband. When they get a good look at you, they might think he's covering up for someone else. Well, I'll be going along. Uh, by the way, did you ever see this key before? No. What's it for? Uh, elusive, isn't it? Just like your husband's motive. What did you do after you left Conroy's house? I threw the revolver into the canal. Tell the boys to drag the canal for that gun. Then what? I wandered around all night. Why'd you go back to your hotel? I was afraid I might be picked up. 
It's already stated nobody saw you shoot, Conroy. Nobody that I know of. I didn't know if anybody might have seen me leave the house. Where was your wife? I don't know. All I know is that I'd seen her earlier that night with Conroy. So I went to his house. To kill him? To warn him. Well, why'd you carry a revolver if you hadn't planned to murder him? I always carried a revolver. I come across all kinds of people where I live, where I go to make a dollar now and then. In other words, Delgado, you insist you went to Lucky Conroy's house to tell him to keep away from your wife. And during the argument that followed, you shot and killed him on the spur of the moment. That's correct. Type up that confession. Now can I go? Yeah, we got reservations all set up in the county jail. But why? All I did was to... I know. All you did was shoot a man. Only you didn't mean it. Hello, Lieutenant. How are you, Mr. Mallon? What can I do for you? I understand you have a Ramon Delgado in custody. Yeah. This is him. Why? Well, I've decided to represent him. You? Well, what's in him, Mr. Mallon? More notoriety? No. The aspect of the case. A man protecting the sanctity of his home interests me. Uh, unless, of course, uh, you prefer some other attorney. Why, uh... No. Only, uh... I have no money. What's money when the very foundation of civilization, the home, is at stake. That's very sweet of you, Mr. Mallon. But I'm having his confession typed now, and he's going to sign it. No. He's not going to sign anything, unless I tell him to. Monsieur Morello, Johnny Morello? Yes. Oh, mais oui, madame, il est ici. Suivez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Hello, Margot. I was afraid you were going to disappoint me. For well, greeting a lady, Johnny, the first thing you're supposed to say is how pretty she looks. Ah, uh, that goes without saying where you're concerned. Thank you. Uh, what are you drinking? Mm, that all depends on the occasion. Well, let's just call it uh, friendship night. All right, then. I'll have a martini. Make it too, Armand. Very dry. Very dry, oui, Monsieur Morello. Uh, would you care to order dinner now, Monsieur Morello? Mm, later. My dear Monsieur. Well, Johnny, what do you want? Just what I have right here, to be alone with you. Well, <laughs> practically alone. Come now. You have too many fillies in your stable to be interested in me. Why do you think I used to go out to dinner with you and Lucky so often? Because I wanted to be near him. You're just the kind of a person who wants something you can't have. Now that Conroy is gone and uh, your husband... Well, you two never click together. Margot, you need someone to look after you. Don't be so sure, Johnny. Don't tell me there's somebody else already. Well, on the other hand, there may have been someone else all the time. I always thought you were too smart for Lucky. That's funny. I felt the same way about you. You did? The way you and Lucky carried on with your business differences. You know, uh, my husband hadn't confessed. I'd have sworn that uh, you did it. We can drink to that, Margot, because I thought you were behind it. Office. Oh, I'm sorry. It can't be today. It'll have to be tomorrow. Mr. Mallon's booked up. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to see Mr. Mallon? I think I'd rather sit right here with you. I'm sure you're a lot prettier than he is. <laughs> is Mr. Mallon expecting you? I hope so. He called me very early this morning. I'm Mike Watling. Oh, so you're Michael Watling. Oh. Mr. Watling's here, Mr. Mallon. Yes, sir. You may go in. Thank you. Hello, Miss Wadley. Come in. Nice of you to come over. How do you do? Sit down. You wanted to see me? Yes. Uh, cigar? I'll have a cigarette. Um, I uh, want to talk to you about a man named Delgado. You know him, don't you? You see, I'm going to uh, defend him. So I understand. 
He must be a very rich man to be able to afford you. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I'm handling this case without a fee. You are? Why? Publicity, prestige. It's a crime of passion. Yeah, poor self-sacrificing husband. And a beautiful betrayed wife. Very beautiful, Mr. Mallon. Sounds like a simple case. Yes, but uh, I need your help. I wondered where I figured into this. Delgado came to you before he gave himself up. He was arrested in your apartment. Just, uh, what did he want from you? A cup of coffee. That's all. But if you want to know more, why don't you ask him yourself? He's your client, isn't he? Yes, of course. He told me the same thing he told the police. Peculiar sort of fellow, isn't he? Very, uh, uncooperative. Is he? Now, uh, you know and I know that in order to gain his acquittal, I ought to know everything about him. I should think so. Eh, uh, didn't he have some connection with one of these syndicates? These horsemen? Did he have a run-in with anyone? Could be, but I can't help you, Mr. Mallon. However, you should have no trouble getting his acquittal. There is such a thing as the unwritten law, you know. Did it ever occur to you that your client may not have killed Conroy at all? Well, if you know anything like that, tell me. Even if Delgado is silly enough not to help himself, not to tell me everything, maybe we can help him. Never mind, Mr. Mallon. Just an idea. <laughs> no, you don't get an idea like that just out of thin air. Did uh, Delgado tell you anything? Nothing. I told you, nothing at all. Mr. Wantling, I don't think you're telling the truth. If you really want to know, I'm not. Well, it's been nice seeing you. Goodbye. <laughs> Come with you? No, I can handle them alone. What can I do for you? Well, you can do me a favor. Sure, anything if I can. Tell me, what is this key for? Just open a lock, of course. Is this another one of your tricks? No, I'd like to know exactly what kind of a lock this key might fit. Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Watling. It could open a door, a garage, a strong box, practically anything with a built-in lock. Excuse me, Mr. Watling. What can I do for you, sir? You can give me that key. Don't you know it's impolite to point? Cut the comedy, you, and give me that key. Don't argue with a man when he's got a gun, Sam. Go ahead, give it to him. Mr. Watling, you let him get away with the key. Yeah, I know. Soon I'll know what the key fit. Get the key? Yeah, get going. I don't know, Bernie, but you're always telling me to do things I don't want to do. Go on in and take a look and see what's in that box now that you've got the key. The boss will never know. But my job is to get the key, and that's all. But what if there's a fortune in it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. Wait here for me.
Are you feeling better? Yeah. What? Where am I? You just rest. I'll be right back. Oh. oh it hurts. What hurts? It hurts me to think that we've never met before. I like nurses. They know all the answers. They know all the questions, too. It isn't a corner. What happened, Lieutenant? A bomb explodes at the bowling alley in the locker. You and a couple dozen more were knocked unconscious by the concussion. But the doc says you'll come out with nothing worse than a headache. Oh, no, that's an understatement. Anybody killed? Yeah, the man who opened the locker blown to bits and two bystanders. You were lucky. Who was the mug? There's not enough left to tell us anything about him. What makes you think it was a mug? Elementary, my dear Lieutenant. Elementary. The way he walked, talked. Well, he looked and acted when he forced me to give him a locker key at the point of a gun. Very interesting. And where, may I ask, did you get that key? From Ramon Delgado. Ramon Delgado, huh? Yeah, you remember him. He was that menacing hombre that you so heroically captured in my apartment. That's where I first came into the picture. He gave me a key to hold for him. What? Well, come on, if you don't believe me, he'll tell you. Where do you think you're going? To the county jail, naturally, to see a man about a key. Yeah, you look awful sweet walking into the jail in that outfit oh. there. Nurse, bring me my clothes. If he sleeps all day, what's he expect to do at night? Maybe it bothers him to stay awake and think about the booby trap, he said. Delgado. Hey, Delgado. What's the matter with this guy? I don't know, Lieutenant. He said he didn't feel too well a couple of hours ago. He acts like he's dead to the world. Just dead, Lieutenant. What? Just dead. You know, Mike, you make me do everything. Everything I don't like. Now that Delgado is dead, you make me follow him here where they cut him up. Don't talk about it. Gives me the creeps. Well, there's nothing to it. Why don't you take a look? Yeah, we will. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, you better go look yourself. No, no, you look. I've seen it before. Did you find anything, Coroner? Poison. Acetamolin. Just what I figured. He took the easy way out. Guess he couldn't take it. Oh, that doesn't add up. Why should he confess and then kill himself? Well, he got panicky. They all do when it sinks in. Will that be all, Lieutenant? Think that does it. Yeah, and I'm making my report. Uh, Doctor. What did you say the name of that poison was? Asa... Acetanolin. It's a slightly colorless crystal with a rather pungent odor. Does it come in any other forms besides crystals? Oh, certainly. The crystalline mass is often distilled for use in manufacturing medicines and dyes and stabilizing hydrogen peroxide and in varnish. Thank you very kindly, Doctor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you know? Well, I know Delgado died of poison. That's what the man said. That isn't what you said. You said he committed suicide. That's right. I say it was murder. Did you check to see if Delgado had any visitors this afternoon? I sure did. Only his wife. That's all, Bill. Mrs. Delgado. Oh, you again. So you know the Falcon, too. We've met before. I'm sorry about your husband, Mrs. Delgado. You are? I'm not. Well, if you despise him so much, why'd you visit him? If you really want to know, to see how he looked behind bars. I wouldn't be so flippant, Mrs. Delgado. After all, your husband is dead. Poisoned, you understand? So I heard. So what? Well, I guess he was a nice guy until... Until the two of you split up. You see, I happen to know you were a dance team once. But you never got past the third-rate circus, did you? That was his fault. He never had any ambition. But then you managed to do better by yourself. Or should I say, for yourself? Yeah, after you met Bruce Conroy. Bruce Conroy was a friend, that's all. Your husband said he was in love with you. Oh, he did. Mrs. Delgado, you were the only one to visit your husband today. Did you happen to give him a cigarette, a piece of gum, or, um... Uh, yeah, did you give him anything else? You mean you want me to tell you I gave him the poison? No. Look, you two, it's your business to find out how he got it, so get busy. Yeah, we intend to. 
All right, you can go. But don't leave town. I'll be wanting you again. I'll be around town. It's been raining in Palm Springs. So long, sweetheart. I'll be seeing you. Good night, Lieutenant. Hey, where's my half dollar? Look in your coat pocket. Tonight was your steak night. This roast beef is delicious, though. You'll like that. What's the matter, boy? What? Oh. Thank you, pal. All right, come out of there. Come out of that bedroom, I said. Well, how do you do? What can I do for you? Hands up and mouth shut. Now, let's have that key. What key? The key Delgado gave you. The key to the safe deposit box. Ah. Uh. Must be one of these. Now, look. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Might be one of my girlfriends. You wouldn't want me to miss a date, would you? Mr. Watling, I left my keys in there. Uh, I don't see them anywhere, Mrs. Murphy. Well, uh, could I come in and look for them? Well, not the way I am just now. Could you come back later, please? Uh, I will, Mr. <coughs> Watley. Now stop that nonsense, Brain Trust. Like a good boy. <coughs> All right, let's have those keys, you donkey. First, let me tell you. This key is for my apartment. And the other two are for my car. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big boy like you shouldn't be playing with a toy like this. Suppose you tell me what this is all about. I'm not talking. All right, so you won't talk. I think I'd better take you to someone that'll keep you from running around annoying people. All right, open the door. Let's go. Well, what is it now, Mike? 
Nothing much. I want you to put him away for disturbing the peace, breaking into my apartment, possession of firearms, and 32 other counts. Is that so? He's been a busy little boy, hasn't he? Who are you? What's your name? I'm not talking. You're not. Come on. Hey, Bill. Book him for illegal possession of firearms. Tell the captain I'll talk to him later. Come on, come on. You know, Hardy, there's something very peculiar about this key business. This lug has been after a key to a safe deposit box. A key that Delgado was supposed to have given me. Ah, uh, he did give you a key, didn't he? Yes, you know he did. The one to that mess in the bowling alley. But it seems that someone is after another key. All right, let's go. I'll make him talk. Just a minute. I think I have a better idea. Well, what is it? We're going to the property custodian's office. Property custod... Come on, let's go. Good evening, Lieutenant. How are you? Fine, thank you. Let me have Delgado's personal effects. Okay. Did you find anything interesting? I'll say lots of things. Yeah, you always do. There's the safety deposit box, Steve. Yes, and here's a receipt for the safety deposit box from the Hollywood State Bank. There you are. Now all we have to do is go down and find out. Well, banks have a habit of closing at three. Yes, and not even you can get in there. The man is dead. He has a wife and an estate. Someone from the tax department has to be there. That's right. I'll have Mrs. Delgado and the tax official there the first thing in the morning. Incidentally, what do you expect to find there? The name of the person who murdered Delgado? Could be. This receipt was dated the same day Delgado gave himself up. So what? He put his money in his jewels where his wife couldn't get at them. What else was there? Matches, cigarettes, a wallet with his identification cards. Oh, yes, and this letter. I sent his clothes to Mrs. Delgado as you instructed. Well, I'm glad you did. What's this say? Dear Mr. Delgado, please sign the attached letter. Seal it in the enclosed envelope and give it to the messenger immediately. Very truly yours, Thomas Mallon. What did Mallon want Delgado to sign? Well, probably a statement of a witness or some other angle of the case. Is that the way a lawyer usually does business? Well, you don't expect a busy man like Mallon to come running every time his client wants something, do you? He sent it over by messenger late in the afternoon. Soon after Delgado signed it, he... Yeah, you know the rest. Yeah. What's that? Aspirin. An excellent relief for headache. I think you'll be needing them. Uh... Good night, Fred. Good night, Lieutenant. I didn't know where to find the switch. You've already had one close call. What's the idea of breaking in here? I just wanted to see why Delgado laid a trap to get you. What do you mean? You know, that bomb was meant for you, Mellon. Delgado wanted me to give you the locker key if he was convicted. Well, that's gratitude for you. Give a man your services and what's he do? Tries to kill you. Well, it's just as well he poisoned himself. Must have had a screw loose. You know, I'm not so sure he did poison himself. All I know is what's on the police record and the coroner's verdict. Anyway, my client is dead, and as far as I'm concerned, the case is closed. That's what I figured. I wonder why Delgado had it in for you. Oh, he had it in for the world. You know the type. Did it ever occur to you, Mr. Mallon, that uh, Delgado's wife, Margot, uh, I think you do know Margot, don't you, might have killed Conroy and her husband took the blame for it? Well, she wouldn't admit anything when her husband was alive, and... 
Now, since he's confessed and is dead, I doubt if we'll ever know. Yeah? Tell me, Wadley, just what interest do you have in this case? Well, I guess it's my sense of smell. It's been bothering me ever since Delgado came to see me. I, uh, don't quite get it. I still smell something wrong, Mr. Mullen. I can't tell you uh, just what it is. Not yet. Well, good night. I'll be seeing you. Good morning, Phil. Hello, Mike. You and the bloodhound picking up scents? No, just out to take a gander while the strong arm of the law tags the culprit for parking five minutes overtime. This guy's been here all night. Maybe he ran out of gas or someone stole his motor and he couldn't drive away. How strict? Full brain trust and I'll show you a new one. Now blow. Hey, Mike, how did you do that? Very simple. Here, I'll show you. Now open your mouth. Say, this car's been parked here all night. That's what's on the ticket I just put there. Hey, what are you writing down that license number for? I just remembered I have to buy a new car. Oh. Come on, Brain Trust. Mr. Watling. Auto license number 7P1993. Legal owner, Centennial Finance Company. Registered owner, Bernie Horton, 309 North California Street. Bernie Horton, 309 North California Street. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. It's all right. Watling. He does have a record. He's out on parole. First offense. Illegal possession of firearms. Afraid he has a second offense now, Fred. Let me see who handled this case. Thank you. Yeah, boy, come up here. I've got to call a genius. I didn't hear from you about that guy that I brought in. They won't talk, huh? But you are checking on him. That's good. Let me know, will you? Sure, I'll be going along. I'll meet you at the bank. Is uh, Mrs. Delgado going to be there? Okay, that's good. I'll meet you at 10. Good morning, Miss Delgado. Sorry I'm late. Oh, good morning. Well, here we are. Here's the key. Oh, well, this is Mr. Uh... Worthington from the State Inheritance Tax Office. How are you? I'm Lieutenant Hardy. This is my friend, Mr. Wadley. What are you doing here? Me? I'm just guarding the lieutenant. In case there's a bomb in the safety deposit box. Say, thanks. I never thought of that. Delgado? 
Maybe we shouldn't open it here. Ah, go ahead. Money. And lots of it. You seem surprised, Mr. Delgado. May I? Where do you get that kind of money? Why, I don't know. Did uh, Conroy pay him more? Conroy? You know, for keeping his mouth shut, not causing a scandal on account of you. That's absurd. He was getting money from Conroy. Why would he kill him? Maybe the income stopped. $24,500. You're rich, Mrs. Delgado. What on earth happened here? What have you two been up to? Another five minutes and I just smothered to death, Mr. Wantley. Oh, you could have breathed through your nose with poor brain trust. Poor brain trust, is it? And what kind of friends have you got that forced the landlady to open the door for them? Forced you? At the point of a gun. Mm, how many of them? Two. What they look like? With a gun pointed right at my heart, I have nothing to do but to examine them for the color of their eye. Did they say what they were You're after? You're a detective. Go find them. And when you do, and they said not to me what they were after, but I have something to say to them. Sure, sure, Mrs. Murphy. Now, don't you worry. Next time, it'll be your turn to gag them. I'm only glad nothing happened to you. Now, I want you to do me a favor. You take Shoot. care of brain trust for me. I have some place to go. Now, stay out of trouble. Oh, brain trust. Oh, it's a dirty shame it is to do such a thing to a lovely dog. Send him in. Business, hmm? Do you want me to leave? Oh, darling. I have no secrets from you, Angel. Ah, how was that? Perfect. Everything I do is perfect. I can see that. Oh, I'd like you to meet Miss Alice Townsend, Mr. Watley. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Townsend? Sorry I didn't know you were coming. I would have had a friend for you. I've already met a couple of your friends that I don't like. If you don't mind, I, I think I'll powder my nose. See you later, darling. What did you mean by that crack, Wadley? Those hoodlums, you might as well call them off. The police already have the $25,000 you've been looking for. What $25,000? The money you paid Delgado to kill Conroy. <laughs> Why should I want Conroy dead? To acquire the complete ownership of the racing stable. Listen, Wadley, I never knew Delgado. Besides, murder is not my business. Did Conroy have any business dealings with Delgado? Was there anything between them, that is, other than Margot? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Conroy is dead. Delgado is dead. Why don't you mind your own business? Have any other tips, Johnny? Yeah. Blue Angel in the 5th at Bay Meadows tomorrow. Thanks. I knew I'd get some information from you. You better stay out behind the eight ball, Johnny. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Going somewhere? Oh, my maid just told me my canary flew outside. I'm going to look for her. I'm hysterical. You're blocking my way. You aren't going anywhere. Who do you think you are coming here this way? We're going to have a talk. A talk? What about? About you, Conroy, Morello, your husband, the whole caper, Margot. Margot? Okay, Mrs. Delgato. But this talk may be for your benefit, not mine. How do you mean? Somebody wants something your husband left around. The money? Maybe. Maybe not. If it is the money, I'm out of danger. But you're not. And if it isn't the money? Then we're both in danger. Whoever paid your husband off is already responsible for three deaths. And that person wouldn't stop at four. Or even five. Have you any idea who it is? If I knew why, then I'd know who it is. I'd like to see your husband's clothes. What for? Your husband had something very important, and it stands to reason that he wouldn't trust anybody with it. He must have had it on him. Come on, let's see those clothes. They were sent to the Salvation Army this morning. 
I certainly didn't want them. To the Salvation Army. Well, come on. Let's go. Right this way, please. You see, Captain, we're only interested in one particular bundle. It was a bundle that was sent over from Mrs. Delgado's apartment. But you see, I have no way of knowing just where that bundle is. You may as well look around. You know, people leave all sorts of things in their clothes. Uh, papers, valuables, all sorts of things. But they always turn them in. How'd you make out today? <laughs> Not so good. They only turned in two pencils. Oh, this was his. This is what he wore when he gave himself up. Let me see it. You're very lucky he came just in time. In just about an hour, they sent it out to have it fumigated. Of course, we don't always do this sort of thing. This clothes supposed to be for poor folks, you know. But being this a special occasion, well, I thought it'd be all right. And that's unusual. If you notice, only one shoe has been half sold. Let's take a look. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Don't worry, Captain. We'll take care of it. Uh-oh. What is it? Dynamite. I don't want it to explode in your face. Here you are, Captain. That'll take care of the shoes and give this to your welfare fund. Thank you. This is a mighty fine contribution. People nowadays don't realize how important our fund is. What was on that piece of paper? The answer to all of our questions. Aren't you going to let me in on it? Sure, but we're in a hurry now. Uh-oh, don't look back. What's the matter? Someone's watching us. What? They're still following us. Go in the drugstore and call the police. Ask for Lieutenant Hardy. Tell him to meet me at Tom Mallon's office right away. Uh, here's a nickel. Uh, I better drive around a couple of blocks and see if I can lose them. As soon as you finish your call, wait for me on the corner and I'll pick you up. I think so. Good. Now, what was on that piece of paper? No time for chatter now. Oh, come in. Oh, Mrs. Delgado, Mr. Watling. I'm surprised to see you two together. Nothing surprises me anymore. My uh, secretary took the afternoon off, and I was about to call it a day. How fortunate. We got here just in time. Yes, another minute would have been too late. Now, what can I do for you? You can tell me who your friend was that got blown up in the bowling alley. What else would you like to know? Oh, I'd say I know just about enough. Shouldn't you have said too much? No, just enough to send you to the gas chamber. What in the world's all this double talk? You said all the answers were on that piece of paper. What piece of paper? You know, Tom, your confession to the murder of Lucky Conroy. Mr. Watling, just what are you saying? It's quite a tale, Margot. You see, our friend Mr. Mallon isn't merely a criminal lawyer. He's also a criminal. You're a puzzle, Mr. Watling. You won't talk when it'll help you, and you talk too much when it'll hurt you. You refused to pay Conroy your gambling losses because you knew too much about his syndicate. Well, you're saying something a dead man can't verify. 
Nevertheless, you went to his home for a showdown, and he threatened you. Nonsense. As a criminal lawyer, you were accustomed to figuring angles out after the damage was done. So you killed him in the heat of an argument, and then you made a deal with Delgato. Go on. You fascinate me. You mean my husband took the blame for him? And $25,000. Why not? Mallon convinced him that he would have him acquitted. And what about that confession? He would have never entered into this deal without Mallon's written confession. That confession was his passport to freedom. But he didn't realize that you intended to kill him before the trial. Your calculations don't add up. Why should I kill Delgado? Because your goon walked into the booby trap that Delgado had set for you. And then you got panicky. You had a key taken from me. Tell me, were you after the money? Or the confession. Now, what do you think? But my man thought there might be money there, so he took it upon himself to find out. Now, that clears up two murders. Conroy's and your little boy's. If it isn't a trade secret, would you mind telling me just how you eliminated Delgato? That, Mr. Watling, I didn't do. Your own mate? has a pungent odor like poison. So that was it. Sending a self-addressed envelope to Delgato in jail. He licked it and got the poison. But you made one mistake, Mellon. Just one mistake. Did I? You allowed your stooges to annoy me. I had to get to the bottom of it. You see, the little lady and I were on a spot. I'll put that away, Mellon. It won't do you any good. Hardy's on his way down here this very minute. You know, Mr. Watling, you also made a mistake. In fact, Two of them, for instance. You had everything figured out except one thing. Margot was not in love with Lucky Conroy. Is that true, Margot? That's right. And mistake number two, Lieutenant Hardy is not on his way over. Here's your nickel, sweetheart. I forgot to make your call. Nice going, Margot. So you weren't two-timing after all. You were three-timing. Get it over with, Tom. Oh, there's plenty of time. I rather enjoy this. This was the moment when the trusty lieutenant was to have crashed into the room and collared the culprit. <laughs> Such a crude arrangement. You know, Watley, it's remarkable that you've stayed alive as long as you have. So they tell me. I'm open to persuasion, of course. Can you think of any reason why I shouldn't kill you? No. Go on home, Margot. There's no reason for you to be mixed up in this. Chivalry is not dead. Go on home and sharpen your stiletto. Go on, Margot. Going somewhere, Mrs. Delgado? Look out, Hardy, you'll shoot! Oh, come! So you all right? Yeah, I'm okay. You're a bad shot, Mallon. You got the wrong person. Glad you're still here, Mallon. Or you could have died thinking Margot called the police after all. But don't worry, she didn't. While she was tipping you off, I called the lieutenant myself. Not that I didn't trust Margot. Professional caution, we call it. Come on. Good morning. What'd you say? I said good morning. Turn off the radio, will you, Hardy? Quiet. Now, what'd you say? I said good morning. Morning. Cigarette? Oh. Light? Yes, sir. Someday you'll learn to keep your door locked. You didn't come over here this early in the morning just to tell me to keep my door locked. I didn't come over here to tell you anything. I came to ask you something. Something that won't go through here. Yeah? Why did Mallon pick Delgado to take his rap? Well, uh, that's simple. You see, Delgado went over to Conroy's to tell him to stay away from Margot. He must have arrived there just when Mallon killed Conroy. So Mallon thought quickly and made his deal. I get it. And from then on, Delgado was a dead pigeon. You see, Brain Trust? He's a detective. 